thank you to Threads Cultural Conversations for my invitation to speak with you about my life and many other things. But I'll tell you what I gave the title to what I'm going to talk to you about is called Life's Journey. I acknowledge my presence in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people here in Nova Scotia. And I also want to acknowledge my ancestors and all those warriors who fought for justice and equality. It is their determination and fighting spirit that gives me the strength and courage to climb and soar as they would want me to do. I stand on their shoulders and I thank God for my many blessings. I am the daughter of immigrant parents. My father, the late Reverend Canon George Francis was born and raised in Cuba. His family moved to United States when he was an adult. His father, however, died in Cuba. My mom, Thelma Dolores Francis, was born in Antigua. She immigrated to the United States when she was about 18 years old. So I will say that they both started their marriage in Canada. My father wanted to move to Nova Scotia to be the pastor in the church, our, in our um, Orthodox Church, which is St. Philip's Orthodox Church in Sydney. So I was born and raised in Sydney, Nova Scotia, in a community called Whitney Pier on Cape Breton Island. Nine months before Viola Desmond, a black businesswoman, was arrested in Nova Scotia on November the 8th, 1946, and later convicted for sitting in a whites only section in a movie theater in New Glasgow. Who could have guessed that my life and Miss Desmond's life would merge in 2010? I grew up in a diverse community of immigrants in Whitney Pier. We lived in harmony with non-Black immigrant people who had come from different parts of the world in search of employment and a better life for themselves and their children. People left their homes in places like Poland, Ukraine, and Lebanon and crossed the ocean to come to Cape Breton. There were Acadians, Jewish people, and West Indians who lived with descendants of earlier waves of Scottish and Irish immigrants. Many immigrants found jobs in Sydney steel plant. Some were also entrepreneurs. We were a strong, hardworking, and closely knit community. As a community, we shared and cared for each other. In my memoir, I tell how whenever my sister and I outgrew our clothes, our mom gave them to families in need. The color of our neighbor's skin did not matter. All that mattered that they were in need of clothing. I credit my acceptance of people regardless of their background to growing up in the diverse community of Whitney Pier. My parents played a role in my outlook and socialization by showing us, my sister and I, how to be kind and respectful to people regardless of their color. My parents' involvement in community and church, as well as growing up in an immigrant community, set the stage for my very public journey. My father not only gave time to the church, he was also involved in public service by serving on countless boards. 
law enforcement consulted with my father when somebody from the community was in trouble with the law. Politicians often came to our home and my father encouraged community to vote. My mother always looked like a fashion queen. We did not have much, but she believed there was no excuse for not looking clean and tidy. She made many of our clothes. Her views about clothes impact my views about how to dress in life. As first-generation Nova Scotians, my parents drilled onto us that to succeed in life, we had to be educated. The emphasis on education was widespread throughout Whitney Pier, which has resulted in many prominent and successful people in Canada and elsewhere. Now, when I was asked to be Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia in 2006, I was surprised and nervous. I thought about my parents and warriors who fought for equality and justice for Black people. As I said in my memoir, and I quote, there I was a Black woman from humble beginnings sitting with the Prime Minister who has selected me to be the vice regal representative, not only was I surprised, I was also gripped with fear. Would the people of Nova Scotia accept a black woman as their Lieutenant Governor? You see, racism was at that time and still is alive and well. I would be the first Black person in Nova Scotia and only the second Black person in all of Canada to receive this high honor as Lieutenant Governor. I knew that regardless of my answer, my life would be impacted forever. Because of my faith, in God, I knew I would be steered in the right direction. Within 48 hours, I accepted the invitation to be Lieutenant Governor. I have no regret. It was an honor for me to represent our former Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II's death on September the 8th, 2022, deeply saddened me because of my positive feeling about her and how she always demonstrated her sincere respect for me when I spend time with her. She will be in my heart forever. As the first black person to be Lieutenant Governor and second woman, the course of my life, as well as the history of Nova Scotia, was changed forever. When I was Lieutenant Governor in 2010, I became part of Viola Desmond's history. Viola is the first woman, after Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, to be on a Canadian money bill. She's on our $10 bill. Here is Viola's history. Back in the early 1900s, she first began her career as an educator. Even though black people were denied entry into the teacher training school here in Truro, Viola studied through correspondence course wrote the provincial test and obtained her certificate. She along with other black teachers were permitted to teach only in black schools. After reading an article about Madam C.J. Walker, 
Viola's dream developed. In the early 1900s, you see, Madam Walker developed beauty products and beauty training schools for black women. She was the first black female millionaire in the United States. So Viola started saving her own money to study at a beauty school in Montreal because the beauty schools in Halifax at that time were restricted to white only. Viola was a hard working entrepreneur with a dream and a vision for success. She was unique because she was a successful black businesswoman during a time when race relations in this province were dismal. Her determination, intelligence, and business acumen matched by her drive to succeed in the face of racism and discrimination is a testament to the type of person Viola was. She understood the value of hard work and empowerment. Her parents gave her a solid foundation and the support she needed to keep her dream alive. Everything changed for Viola in November 1946. As a successful businesswoman, she decided to expand her business. So on November the 8th, she headed to Sydney, Cape Breton, where I was born. Unfortunately, her car developed mechanical trouble in New Glasgow. Since her car would take several hours to be repaired, she decided to go to a movie in New Glasgow. Because she sat in the whites only section in the Roseland Theater, she was arrested and thrown into jail. It costs more to sit in the white section, but the clerk would not accept her money to pay the difference in price, which was only one penny. Subsequently, Viola was wrongly convicted for tax evasion of one cent. 64 years later, on April the 15th, 2010, in the province of Nova Scotia here, the NDP government under former Premier Daryl Dexter issued an apology to Viola's family for her wrongful conviction. On that same day, I, the first African Nova Scotian Lieutenant Governor, on the earlier recommendation of Premier Dexter, the Attorney General and the Executive Council of the Provincial Government requested that I grant Viola a pardon. I agreed with them. So I granted the Royal Prerogatory of Mercy, free pardon to Viola Desmond on the same day of the apology, April the 15th, 2010. It represented the unwavering recognition of her innocence and wrongful conviction. In 1946 and rights are wrong that never should have happened. The queen or king of Canada or their representative can execute the granting of the free pardon. In 2010, I was her majesty's representative as Lieutenant Governor the free pardon is only granted to someone who is innocent. There is an undeniable link that will last forever between Viola Desmond, the Crown, private and business industry, provincial, federal and municipal governments, government house, and me personally, the first black Lieutenant Governor who granted the free pardon to an innocent black woman. And by the way, Viola was inducted into the Business Hall of Fame here in Nova Scotia in 2021, posthumously of course, 
And she was the 100th person to be installed into the Business Hall of Fame. And this is what they said about her. And I quote, Viola's recognition helps to right a wrong, namely challenge our lack of appreciation and understanding for the models of female leadership and black entrepreneurship and their valuable contributions to our knowledge of entrepreneurship, leadership, management, and organizations, end of quote. The use of the Royal Prerogative of Mercy Free Pardon for Viola Desmond was historic and the significance of both our connection cannot be denied or ignored. It is like the circle had been completed between the promise of her brave stand for equality and social justice and my appointment to the vice regal office. The circle is a confirmation for future generations to understand the importance of inclusiveness that ensures our history of exclusion, racism, and discrimination is never repeated. Unfortunately, we will never know to what heights Viola would have taken her business. Did that cruel act on November the 8th, 1946 and its aftermath break her spirit and crush her dreams? There is sufficient research that points to the negative impact of racism on one's mental and physical health. Viola died in the United States, New York City on February the 7th, 1965, at the age of 51, 19 years after her arrest, and wrongful conviction. Viola was attempting to grow her business in 1946. Imagine for a moment the empire she could have built by continuing to grow her business. Imagine how her successful business could have contributed to the economy and cultural fabric of our province and our country. Imagine the number of people, regardless of color, she could have inspired to become entrepreneurs, especially women. Viola is a very important aspect of Canadian history. There are many schools named after her, scholarships named after her, ferry boats, some streets, and she's on our $10 bill. When I freed her, I said, it is impossible that with the stroke of a pen and the granting of a free pardon, history is forgotten and the proverbial slate is wiped clean. On the contrary, this very moment in Viola Desmond's story will ensure her legacy lives on in legal journals, newspapers, human rights research, political science debates, and in race relations studies. When my tenure as Lieutenant Governor ended in April 2012, I was proud of the many things I had accomplished. As people have said, I came to an office what a unique and wide perspective because of my background in human rights, human resources, religious studies, public administration, health and law. Collectively, my background gave me the ability to feel comfortable with a wide range of people and enjoy their company. My hope is that my actions as Lieutenant Governor demonstrated my deep respect and love for my province and my country. Being the first black person 
or person of color in any field or profession is a challenge. For me, that was often meant trying to be perfect because if I was not perfect as the first, there might not be a second, third, or fourth black person of color or indigenous appointment. I would not have survived without my faith in the higher power. I write about this in my memoir and describe the barriers I have climbed over while on the path to success. I also wrote to encourage people to take a good look at themselves and honestly consider pressing issues like racism and discrimination so that we can all move forward with faith, hope, respect, peace, and love in our hearts. I recognize there are people who wouldn't acknowledge racism and discrimination as their problem because they believe society is fine the way it is. In my successful roles, I always made sure that equity and inclusivity was respected not only for black people, but for indigenous people, people of color, persons with disabilities, or the LGBTQ plus community people and people from other countries. You see, my foundation for respecting people from various walks of life is my growing up in Whitney Pier, which was a diverse community. I have worked with people from different parts of our world. I always made sure I understood where they were from, their background and their views. It was always a pleasure. Now in 1993, I had the privilege to deliver a speech to the Multicultural Health Association here in Nova Scotia about racism and discrimination. Here are some of what I said. Because racism and discrimination come from within, we must each fulfill our obligation to change. We must stop and think about our personal response to the multicultural face of Canadian society. To do this requires a degree of honesty and courage that we may not have displayed in the past. Recognizing that the process of socialization has incorporated racism and discrimination into our psyche, we must face it head on, end of quote. Even though I wrote those words over 30 years ago, it is still words for today. As immigrants, refugees, people of color, you must be proud of who you are and not let discrimination break your spirit. It is about courage, love of self, and confidence in all of our abilities. For me, I stay strong, happy, and steadfast. If my spirit is bent, it will not be forever because of my faith, my mentors, my role models, my determinations, my dreams, and my strong self-confidence. As well, I always made sure that I followed my parents' emphasis on education at all stages of life. And remember, being a reader of books or even listening to some music can add to our education intelligence, and our success. As a leader in my various roles, I made sure that I demonstrated a caring 
attitude, empathy, compassion, and understanding for all people, regardless of their color and or nationality. Besides demonstrating being intelligent and a strategic thinker, I was and still am strong spiritually and ethically. I mentor a variety of individuals, regardless of color or their country. Many of them are successful. And you know, as a first generation immigrant, I am very sensitive to their concerns. As I said earlier, Growing up in Whitney Pier has opened my heart and respect for a diversity of people. As immigrants and refugees, I know the country where you are planning to be, and you must know the country where you're going to. As a successful immigrant professor told me, she encourages immigrants in her class to interact with everyone, mingle and do their best to understand where they are. Have confidence of self. Be proud of who you are. Demonstrate that you care and want to interact with everyone. If you have expertise in particular areas, show your knowledge, maybe even start a business. In the final chapter of my memoir, I said this, I worked tirelessly and fought hard to prevent anyone from breaking my spirit or blocking my road to success, to have my journey culminate in the heights of Lieutenant Governor has taught me a great deal, not only about myself, but also about life and people. Regardless of the barriers placed in front of us, there is always a way to survive. It may not seem that way when we are going through difficult times, there will always be times when we will throw our hands into the air and ask, why am I putting up with this? Believe me, I have been there. I relied on my God, my family, my friends, my mentors, my advisors, and my cat, Angel, who unfortunately is deceased now, to help me weather many of the storms I faced at different times in my life. These were my anchors. I hope you'll refine yours. In closing this presentation, it is my wish that my story and comments will inspire you to stay strong, love who you are, study your province and country, stay educated, embrace people who are positive and friendly, love your community, province, and country. 